another comet flying around. <laughs> I should say probably orbiting around, but I like flying. Uh, and this one is Comet Olbers. And uh, what a great surprise that I was able to photograph it again in a lucky shot with the uh, Dwarf 2 telescope. It was very difficult to photograph with the other mount that I have in the Sky Dome as of course there's going to be trees and something on the way. And also it's getting a little bit low in the horizon by the time it gets dark. Um, so that was difficult, but that's the beauty of uh, the Dwarf Telescope, that it's so easy to use and to start. So I was able to capture a long time, much more than what I thought. I maybe it was going to be like five minutes, but it was for a while. And I have to say, I photographed it for about an hour, an hour and a half. And that was very rewarding. And that's what matters. Comet 13P Obers is a Halley type comet with an orbital period of 69 years. Like the other comets, it's an object composed of ice, rock, and dust. Discovered way back in 1815 by Heinrich Olbers, this comet has been dazzling us for over two centuries. Its elliptical orbit takes it close to Jupiter, giving it a spectacularly long journey around the sun, about 69 years per lap. Did you know Comet 13P Olbers is classified as a periodic comet? That means it regularly returns to the inner solar system, letting us marvel at its icy brilliance time and again. I entered the coordinates manually and I got them at Sky Live website. Okay, it's 4th of July, obviously, <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, explosions and fireworks and the dogs are barking. The uh, Colbert Comet, again, time to send the telescope there. We're going to see about this audio because it is, <laughs> sounds like a war zone right now. Tonight is a clear night, relatively clear. I know it's very low on the horizon, but I am hoping to get at least five or ten minutes of it. You know, I missed the first three days of uh, when it was going to reach the brightness. You know, it gets uh, dark so late, and so by now it's pretty low. Well, this is kind of like what I saw last night, so it's saying that's what it is. Okay, so let me just go to the shutter. And we are going to change this to 15 seconds. And you know, I am like 50 second light years away <laughs> with the dwarf. It takes a few seconds to get the brightness, the uh, shutter speed to faster. Oh, uh, there it is. Okay, so I, I am not sure, but that may be my, that may be it. So I'm not sure. It's still not. Oh my God! It's still not completely dark. I'm not sure. Um, maybe if it's the one on top there, or if it's the one in the middle. But it's telling me that it is tracking 13P Olbers. So um, okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up session here. Let me just go here to settings. I finally got a stylus uh, <laughs> because I have a hard time doing this. Go ahead and put that 68. That's, that should be fine. And I'm just going to do the fits and AI enhance is ready. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's up there on the top of the screen. That's where it is which is what I saw. That's the comment. Yiggy, yiggy, yiggy. Woohoo. Okay, well, not center, that's for sure. Oh, man, I would have to really crop this image. I don't think I can move anything now. Comets are very erratic and they are, they move a lot and they move fast, as you know, and sometimes it's very difficult to frame them. And that's the only thing that I have some uh, problems with the uh, Dwarf Telescope that I couldn't frame it in the middle as I probably can do with uh, my other mounts. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm capturing the comet. Okay, I take that. Well, gain 60, that's not bad. I normally use gain 80. I'm not going to change anything because I don't want to miss anything. 
There it is. If I increase here a little bit on the uh, brightness on the curve, that's the comet. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, I'm going to leave it at 68. Uh, I didn't think it was going to get it. <laughs> so now I'm stuck with this session, but that's okay. We are going to wait, but this is exciting. There is the coming. Oh, my God. Uh, right now, as this is the live stack, 43 images and stack 43. Guess, <laughs> figure that out. Um, I'm going to try a second session as soon as I finish this one. I think I put 60, 68 frames. Uh, we'll see if I have the chance to do a second round. I'm going to check the uh, focus in here. I, th I think I, it needs a little bit. The stars are a little bit out of focus, but I started with it and it was, it was still light. Uh, so I really couldn't see more. We'll see at the end of the session. 65 frames, so three more. And then I'm going to see if I can focus again. Yeah, I'm a little surprised how high here it is. It should be almost done. I'm going to do a quick uh, focusing again and see if I can frame this a little bit better. I don't have too much time for uh, <laughs> to be doing a lot of things right now. So um, let me increase. Okay, the gain is now back to 80, which is what I normally do. Let's do the 15 seconds. Come on, come on. I'm telling you, I'm like 50 seconds light years away. <laughs> there it goes again. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, well, let me go here to focus and let me just go ahead and do an out of focus here. And there is a comment up there and that's probably a meteorite or something. Settings, I'm just going to put as long as I can because I don't even know how long it's going to do this. Let's go ahead and do like a hundred. Okay, and let's just go ahead and start again. A, I enhance, it's on, which helps on the contrast. If the stars are looking better. Not the best scene conditions either tonight. Yeah, the transparency is not good. Scene conditions is good, the transparency is not good. But we're getting it. There comes the, the comet. That's what matters. Hey, this is better than nothing. I and mean, I cannot do the uh, Skywatcher, the big telescope right now. Kind of like very low in the horizon. And I am so happy that I am just capturing it. So we're going to keep tracking and we'll see what happens. Okay, so <laughs> just to follow up on the second session, 63 images. And it's still right there so i am very surprised that i am getting this comet right now and now i want to do a little bit of editing uh, from the photos and of course this is going to be very quick and this video is not about editing but it is <laughs> so i'm um, just going to do a quick very basic uh, editing on the stack image, which is actually pretty good considering that the stars are rounded and everything. It, I mean, the, the stacking, uh, the live stacking on the uh, Dwarf Telescope is really good. I can wait to see what Dwarf 3 is going to do. And by the way, I'm going to get one soon. We'll see. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I am going to do some light editing, uh, taking the images and the fits format into PixInsight and see if it really makes a difference. But you let me know. Just write a comment and see which ones you like. Let's do it. This is uh, the files that come of the uh, dwarf. And we're just going to work a little bit on the uh, stack image, which is this one, one of the three that I got. This one doesn't have the tree, but there's the comet very high. I am in Photoshop now, and this is just going to be a very simple editing. 
and we can obviously crop this image. We can leave it the way it is. I mean, this is an event that <laughs> we won't see it in 70, 80 years, so why not? I mean, this is a big success. I'm going just to crop this image and this, I like the stars here in so many ways, but this is a very quick editing. Well, it has a lot of noise. The stars are looking pretty good. So uh, let me just go ahead and use just the camera raw filter, which I have everything here. Change a little bit the contrast here. Let me see what it does with the highlights. I don't want to uh, overexpose that. Let's just go ahead and work a little bit on, on the uh, noise reduction. Okay, let me just go here on the curves and let me just work first on the brightness and see if I can get that tail that I lost. Let's see, working with the colors uh, one at a time. Green, yeah. And then just adding some colors overall. And it's a little bit blue, but um, that's okay. We can bring the blue a little bit down. Okay, and here is another of the uh, images, and this one is the one with the trees. <laughs> this was the last um, session that I did, but uh, there's the comment. Actually, this one looks better, um, so I don't think I need to do too much on this one. Let me go ahead and open it in uh, Photoshop. That's not bad at all, and we can do the same thing. We can just... Um, uh, add some denoise or do whatever we want to do with it. Perfectly fine. You show it to the world. And for this one, I'm not using the stacked image. I'm just using all of the original frames on the uh, fits format, which is the one that works on uh, pics inside. So let's just go ahead and take a look and see how it looks and then we can compare. Okay, so now um, working on pics inside and um, so the calibration process uh, as, as normal as any other image uh, was done on uh, one of my favorite script which is <laughs> WBPP <laughs> and so all the uh, calibration was there and I'm using the uh, dark frames that I took uh, a while ago with the Edward telescope and this is what the first one of the uh, individual frames and as you can see we don't we can't see that much and everything kind of like looks green right for uh, the star alignment in this case and comet alignment I use the process that it's a uh, comet alignment and this one was pretty simple and you know to edit comets it's very complicated uh, but this one was simple because is a one shot color so I don't have to combine three or four different filters so everything was kind of like uh, went really well on the uh, comet alignment my first attempt didn't work too good because I have uh, some parameters and some rejections too strong so after scratching my head and trying to figure out this okay I realized that I just needed a very simple image integration and um, I already did some uh, dynamic background extraction and this is what kind of like was extracted from the uh, background and this is everything that was rejected rejection low and this is the uh, rejection height as you can see all kind of meteors and uh, noises and things that happen are on the background and this one right here is the image that I started working with this is after the uh, automatic background extraction after blur exterminator then noise exterminator start working a little bit with the background this part of the sky, it's very noisy. It has a lot of stuff going on there because it's getting lower in the horizon. And humidity is very high right now. We're in the middle of the summer, so there's all kind of things happening. And then the next uh, crucial step here is to turn this image, uh, linear image, into non-linear. And for that, I used two processes, and one of them is the Arsene stretch. Uh, which I used to start with the stars 
and then I use the generalized hyperbolic stretch. This is kind of like the first uh, result that I got. And this is the image after uh, being stretched. And I did have some problems right here in the, uh, on the uh, nucleus of the comet, but I was able to fix that uh, later with some other processes. But as you can see, still needs some sharpening, but it's not looking bad at all. I love the uh, dwarf uh, fans and community here on YouTube. They like to talk a lot and they like to, uh, all of you, leave some uh, comments. So just let me know what you think on this one. And also I want to tell you to stay tuned as I'm coming with some tutorials for the uh, dwarf telescope and uh, showing a little bit the settings that I use, the uh, upcoming sky events on comets and other things that are going to happen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a few days. Thank you.